which was around the egg, no more like a millstone, a plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. All right, everyone, welcome to uh, another bonus episode here on the Dark Parade. Of course, this is uh, Heart of Horror, in which myself, that's Bo, uh, and the the lovely, the uh, brutally honest... <laughs> <laughs> Kate Pollock <laughs> is, is here as well. Yeah, hi, howdy. And uh, howdy, I like keeping it southwestern. Yeah, sure. And we are talking tonight about uh, a, a fun subject because <laughs> um, it is a movie that I enjoy a lot, a movie called Kiss of the Damned. Mm -hmm. And along with that, because it's vampires... Yes. You can't help but talk about sexiness. Nope, you and, can't. And so we're basically... It's impossible. Have you tried? Have you actually tried to do it? It's impossible. It's like your tongue, you get tongue twisted until you start talking about sex. And then it's like, okay, now the conversation can, you know, if you've got vampires, it has to also involve sex. Um, Maybe, uh, I was going to say the original Nosferatu, maybe the, the least okay, sexy. Okay, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. But, but then you get to the remake and you got Isabella Johnny. Right. And, you know, homina homina. <laughs> <laughs> and all those rats. Like, why he doesn't love a load of rats? <laughs> yeah. So, I this mean, was already off the rails. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to talk uh, a, little about, uh, a little bit about what is sexy. And um, mm -hmm. obviously, this is incredibly personal. One of the things about sexiness in general is it, it's like a sense of humor everybody's is a little bit different the <laughs> the the things that turn you on and the things that um you know make you do a double take and all that kind of stuff uh that is all very unique to the person you know mm -hmm. and and i th i think that is just just luck of the draw and yeah you know, I think it's whenever your sexuality kind of starts to awaken in mm -hmm. your teen years. I think it's sure. just, let's go with teen years. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the, your adolescence. Let's say that, like yeah, that. That kind of that. it depends on on when the the switch got flipped for you. For me, it was like around, eh. Let's say, let's say, generously twelve. Mm -hmm. So like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Those years where it's just you know, for a guy you just become an erection that okay. is just every part of your body is is funneled through that prism mm -hmm. of this you know <laughs> this meat tube that is now swollen <laughs> at inappropriate times <laughs> yes i'm really grateful i never had to deal with that um but mine was especially because mine was a little bit earlier i was kind of i don't know maybe nine really nine? that does seem young but then again women are always you know a couple of years i was an early developer for sure my first uh my first kiss like technically um was when i was six with another girl my oh, age whoa. and we would play girlfriends boyfriends um and it was very kind of more of a curious thing as opposed to i had a crush on her or anything um but yeah, but then by the time I was like nine and ten, I was full on like had lists of all the boys that I fancied and you know stuff like that. And um, yeah, and I had my first boyfriend at the age of eleven. Right, but you don't really you don't know anything at that age. I mean, you know, no. you you have these feelings and you have these urges and impulses and so forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, if, if you're me, you have these really terrible moments where you're forced to go to the head of the class and you're thinking <laughs> oh dear god there is no way they're, they're not going to see this <laughs> yeah i mean again i never had that issue thankfully i don't remember that ever happening to any of the kids in my class like the boys i don't i don't remember that at all i mean i wasn't i don't know i was very easily distracted though so i probably wasn't paying attention i don't remember any names there were definitely moments when you know in gym class when you're you know changing in the showers and stuff where some kid would have a boner and it'd be like hey <laughs> you've got a boner and i don't know why it was funny it was like it's it, funny it's hilarious it, i mean it is it, more so to women than to men 
I think, <laughs> I, just because of the ridiculousness of of the penis as a whole. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's silly, but oh, it is it is a pal. Um, <laughs> and there's two little side buddies. Yeah, yeah. There a number of good songs have been written about masturbation from oh, yeah. the male point of view. Um and and yeah, it's you know, it's the the one companion that you have all your life if you're mm -hmm. a guy. Uh mm -hmm. and not, you know, a Hemingway character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's a, a sun also rises joke for those of you at home. Um <laughs> But, okay, so, but my point being that I think the shit that you're kind of, you're watching and, like, you just get turned on because you're naturally turned on anyway because mm -hmm, of all the yeah. hormones and so forth rushing through you. And so, you know, it can be anything. The example I will use here is, like, the Power Rangers or something. Oh, holy shit, Jason. Sure. Like, I, I don't know any of the Power Rangers names because I was a little bit uh, mm -hmm. yeah, too old for them. but. Either. <laughs> come on now and mm -hmm. it, but but it's that kind of thing of just like holy shit now now i've got a thing for spandex you know <laughs> yeah yeah no for sure um what was uh, like i don't know if i uh, i don't know i just remember all of my kind of like younger celebrity crushes had those really awful curtains like hairstyle oh yeah that kind of hugh grant sort of thing yeah, but like, well, less Hugh Grant, more Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, sure. All right, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I was drinking some coffee. Um, yeah, so um, I, uh, that was, it wasn't really like so much of a kink. It was just more of a like, if a guy had those curtains, I was like, yeah, I'd like to kiss your cheek, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really kind of like get onto specific turn-ons until I was a lot, like, a lot older. I don't think. Yeah. Like I was like, I kind of like tuned into a boyfriend's turn-ons almost, and then it just happened to be that we like the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that was yeah. Turns out it was also spandex, but yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I I think. Yeah, I think that's right. Like, and and I'm 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 trying to remember if there was a specific moment where I was like, you know, here's what I like. I mean, like there there were general things. Like, I I had a kind of a type when I was in my younger years, and I think that was all informed just by cultural stuff. Where I right. just liked, you know, blondes. Uh, that was sort of a type. That kind of California girl kind of kind of look like the girl next door kind of styly yeah yeah right. little but yeah and so the first couple of people i dated were you know blonde hair not necessarily blue eyes but but of that type and Called courtney yeah i'll yeah. tell you what what did it for me was elizabeth shoe and karate kid <laughs> yeah okay okay and that that was <laughs> that was the movie that launched, you know, a thousand masturbation sessions. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, that, that kind of type. In fact, the, the first girlfriend I ever had looked a fair amount like Elizabeth Shue. Right. And, uh, which has changed over the years. Like, you know, I, I think just your taste changes over time or you start to, you know, just develop that, that sense of what you like a little more. Yeah. And, yeah, for sure. Um, my tastes have definitely changed yeah de yeah they definitely changed yeah like when i was younger i would go for kind of like skatery boys mm. and uh you know because it was like late 90s early 2000s and i'd go for like skatery boys uh, this one guy had like longer hair than i did and stuff and he like you know had a skateboard and things i just thought he was so cool mm -hmm. and um and then or otherwise it'd be kind of like um a bit more of a sort of a bad boy i mean none of them were really bad boys let's be honest but like you know that kind of exterior like that sort like of like leather know, jacket vibe. chain wallet oh no like um well i said <laughs> uh, like the british version of bad boys where it's kind of more like mm, like tracksuit bottoms and chains and like <laughs> okay okay <laughs> like that vibe um like a hip-hop kind of vibe all right i'm with you um 
but like now I'm like give me a suit you know <laughs> like I've like gone completely the other way where I'm just like yeah suit yeah mm -hmm. all right like a suit um but then also like um I guess just like but I also I've always always the one thing though that I've, has always been kind of consistent like I'll have like a couple of types but the one that has remained true no matter what else I like is like the, the like blonde haired kind of like pretty boy boy band type you know like I was always into like Nick Carter or like um, you want it that way yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I mean, no one could tell me why, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no. So that was kind of like, but then I'd have like offshoots where I'd be like, oh yeah, like I like this guy or, or now I like this guy and I like this guy. And, and it also is why I kind of, I think it did also depend on what was like fashionable at the time. You sure. Know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you just kind of had to get what was available, but I went through this real stage of like kind of driving around and with these guys in the cars with my friends and just like you know smoking and drinking and just I was just it was not cool <laughs> I thought it was cool it was not cool it was really fucking stupid but like um but I think everyone kind of goes through a dumb phase like that where it's just like oh my god like you don't understand him he's just so sensitive and it's just like he's a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the time like you know girls do dumb stuff to dumb boys <laughs> yeah um but yeah like uh yeah it was just like that. i went through that kind of stage as well I, I went through like a lot of different sort of stages of the type of guy that i i went for just depending on like age and also just what was fashionable at the time i think th this is a callback to the beetlejuice episode to some degree but i think a universal for me was then and still is goth girls yeah that, yeah oh the, the edward scissorhands yeah, episode. yeah yeah sorry sorry not beetlejuice uh, that's why i was just really thrown i was just like what now? um <laughs> yeah sorry um, i think it's no, because okay. recently i saw beetlejuice and i was like man winona Ryder and beetlejuice is super goth in a way that i can really get behind mm -hmm. uh, goth girls for sure. but yeah 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 but yeah that that was a thing even though i didn't really date any goth girls kind of won but uh, by that point, like, she wasn't dressing goth. She just listened to all the music. And that's mm -hmm. way less enticing. Yeah, it's like, the music is definitely a helpful factor. But it is all about the kind of, like, the dark lipstick, the dark hair, pale skin, like, vampy course. It's very kind of, like, figure-hugging or, like, feature-accentuating outfits and fishnets. Yeah, yeah. I just throw oh. in a corset. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, basically, I lived in corsets when I was a teenager, but it was really funny, though, because I was going through this, I went through, well, no, it's, I genuinely just like rock music, so, like, I was really getting into my rock music and stuff, and so I would have, like, like, all of, like, the real full-on makeup, you know, like, loads of eyeliner and smudged everything and, like, bright red lips and, you know, and uh, I'd wear, like, dog collars and stuff, and I'd wear, like, corsets and things for a bit. But I'd have like platinum blonde hair. It was just like such a weird mismatch. Um, but like otherwise, yeah, like I would like go through all this stuff. But like no one kind of like it took me a little bit, it took me until I got about maybe a year or two older to find my tribe of these types of people. Because when I used to go to college like that, people would just like not get it. Mm -hmm. And um, but it took me to kind of like move away from like a certain type of people and sort of gravitate towards another set certain type of people so i thought found as i say sort of found my tribe and it was kind of like yeah look at us all being like you know punky and gothy and stuff like that and uh so yeah so i definitely like i i definitely went through a real kind of corset um few years it was real handy getting into clubs too because i was only like 17 so <laughs> uh d d does the corset add five years or is it just that the bouncers were like well then you, Basically, can, you yes. can come in, little lady. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know one. why they talk like John Wayne, but you get it. Yeah, I get it. They definitely didn't say that to me, but they were just kind of like, yep, you can go in. <laughs> and I was like, yep, thanks. <laughs> um, it was a lot easier back then, though. Like, you know, it was they only ever really ID'd the girls if someone specifically told them that someone was underage and they had to. Mm -hmm. As long as you were, like, you know, not looking like a child, 
um and you weren't like white girl trashed um <laughs> and you i'll be honest it's as sexist as this sounds and you you looked okay yeah um like basically if you were going to encourage other people to come into the club you got in you didn't get id'd or anything um unless as i say someone specifically specifically kind of called you out and i remember there was this club that was like uh that i would go to in my town and um i remember <laughs> i i remember uh one of the bouncers like the head bouncer like i chat to him all the time and like he'd take the piss and we'd have some bants and stuff and i remember and i was because i'd been going there for a couple of years and i remember going there just after i turned 18 and i just got my driver's license and I was all like, yeah, but actually of age, actually have ID. So I obviously would bring it out everywhere with me, just, you know, <laughs> pride of nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, and someone dob like tried to dob me in saying I was an underage. Obviously, someone didn't know me very well because they didn't know I'd had my birthday about like, you know, a week before. And so I think his name was Steve, I can't really remember. Um, he, he came over and he was just like, I don't believe I'm asking you this, but have you got ID? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh can i see it i was like yeah I gave it to him and he looked at the date of birth and his whole face just went white because <laughs> he had been like very inappropriate in like his actions and stuff um over the last couple of years and i think he was doing the math of oh shit she was 15 when she first came in here <laughs> you know <laughs> wow yeah 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 and, and he gave right. it back to me very hurriedly and like he never really spoke to me again <laughs> oh no yeah it was fine because i only, only re i didn't want him to like it the only reason why i entertained it was because i would get in you know it was like um I, but I, I wasn't like we weren't friends <laughs> right you were you were just using that flirtation to get in the door yeah i was using my womanly wiles 100 percent. god gave me certain <laughs> certain features and i used them to the best of my ability thanks excellent so, that that's so, the kind of machiavellianism <laughs> that we like around here well, you know, if I'm going to be like perved on, it's just like, well, you know what? I'm going to use it to my advantage. Right. Yeah. I suppose that's the, the way to look at it is like, I, I'm the male gaze is already upon me. Might as well get some kind of benefit out of it. Yeah. Labor it for its fruit or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but all right. So the reason <laughs> anyway. though, um, you know, maybe transition from the, the fact that goth girls are sexy to, <laughs> uh sexy the vamp to to the the sexy vampires and i have seen kiss of the dam a number of times yeah you had not seen it no i hadn't i thought i had and i hadn't um i can't remember i don't know what i was thinking of but um but yeah and then it became very apparent very quickly i was like oh no not seen this yeah and so then sit back a little while <laughs> yeah and uh i think especially the upfront of this i think the whole thing is kind of sexy but the, the whole the, thing is very sexy yeah uh but that that first like half hour of this movie is Ooh. just about getting down it really really is yeah and like uh, yeah just <laughs> and milo what's his face uh the main guy oh milo um, Ventimiglia? Ventimiglia? Yeah, never pronounced. It's like yeah. Joe, blah, blah, blah. What's his face from like Magic Mike and things. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Twilight. yeah. No, not Twilight. True, true, true Blood. Yeah. Never, can never pronounce his last name either. I'm sorry, um, everyone. Um, him with that beard, with like all of the stuff that he's doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. Yeah, so My Milo <laughs> Milo Ventimiglia, Vint yeah, Milo, I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ends up the whole deal. He plays a like a screenwriter named Paulo, yeah, who, who yeah. is hanging out in the in this town in Connecticut, of all places, <laughs> right? The, a vampire hotbed of Connecticut, <laughs> <laughs> and he's basically like take it off to finish this screenplay. Mm -hmm. and runs into uh, a vamp a vampiress yeah. by the name of juna yeah as uh played by the actress josephine de la Baum. beautiful yeah i mean her name just sounds oh, yeah. like an ingenue <laughs> yeah it does you are right and the first time they see each other is in a video store where she's going to rent some movies 
and he's it's perfect, isn't it? The fuck eyes that they are giving each other in this video store mm-hmm. is just a dream that yeah. I've had of, <laughs> of seeing somebody in like a blockbuster. And it's like, so what are you renting? Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. <laughs> 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 but as soon yeah. as they look at each other it's like these are two beautiful human beings and you know from the second they lock eyes like oh they're gonna fuck yeah they be fucking yeah and they should be fucking the, the, <laughs> am i right yeah that's the old duncan and Bo staple they should yeah. be fucking they should be fucking <laughs> and anyway so they they hang out for a while and then she's like oh no 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 i can't do this <laughs> And there is a moment where she kicks him out and he, he knocks on her door and mm-hmm. they do this kissing through the door. Oh, so good. That like the chain is, is, is still on the it's security lost, chain. Yeah. But, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. is some real mouth action. And, yeah. And they have this like, uh, like angle as it like goes on like a bird's eye view, like over the door. So you kind of see from above how it looks with their like and they're just like through the door there's just this such urgency and want mm-hmm. and like they're just like it's just it's so hard they're, they're just out of reach and like the idea of wanting something that you can't properly have or you can just have like just a taster of is just so enticing and seductive and i just like i, I whatever you're into sex wise whatever like you know it's, it, it, presuming if you are into sex then i feel like something like that is something that taps into all of us um you know from i mean to be honest even if you that, that there is that that is a, something that taps into us just generally there's so like it, regardless of sex there's anything like as soon as you're denied something you want it even more mm-hmm. you know it's that whole kind of like delayed gratification withholding pleasure type thing like even you know you, you had that sorry to take it here um but it's the only thing i can think of offhand but remember that thing a year or two a couple of years ago where it's like the toddler test where you put like some sweets in front of your three-year-old and you tell them they have to wait they can't have one but if they wait then they can have them all if if they don't have any now they can have them all in a minute right right right. and like you film the kid and see what they do sort of thing to see whether they'll wait patiently or whether they will go ahead and sneak some um and it's and so like even from examples like that of like you know when we first start out as little people that whole kind of thing of like as soon as someone says no or as soon as it's just something's just quite out of reach it just becomes so much more seductive or you just you want it even more than if it was just available to you Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean oh absolutely Yeah, yeah 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 and i think that kind of when you watch this scene like you have you pick up on some of that yearning as a as a as a audience member like you feel that that want so much and i think all of us have at some point been in a maybe not a situation quite like this but like just you know where you've been very very attracted to someone and for whatever reason you can't do it or you aren't able to in that moment and you just like god damn it now i want them even more yeah you know, and that, uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that just like what, 10 seconds worth of a, of a, of a shot or a scene, like it's just, it, it just, yeah, as I say, it taps into so much for me. And it was just like, it was really that moment when I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, here's a, you know, fitting the theme of the show. Here's the thing that I find sexy mm-hmm. is when you uh, are kissing someone, not necessarily through a door. <laughs> but that moment when you're like, okay, this is the end of a date and both of us are about to leave. Oh yeah. But there is that moment of like, oh, we're, you know, you know that the moment is about to end and yeah. you, and you have that, you know, kiss or series of kisses that are like, mm-hmm. all right, we're, I, we will see each other again. Yeah. And yeah. It's that pull, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 where you just absolutely do not want that to end. I think that's such a a fun moment. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's just that real kind of like animalistic desire. Mm -hmm. Um, And you just sort of like, I mean, all common sense goes out the window. You know, (laughs) any thought of, oh, I've got to get up early for work tomorrow. Don't care. 
oh, uh, you know, I'm really drunk and like I probably like, you know, should just have a glass of water and maybe a bite to eat and go to bed. Don't care. You know, oh, like, you know, the neighbors are home and <laughs> whatever. Like, don't care. Like, you just like every kind of like bit of rationale that, you know, if, if you, if someone else was there going, hmm, should you do this because, you know, this, 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 it just, that all just completely goes. And you just, all you care about in that moment is what you're feeling and what that person is feeling with you and just having more of it. Yes, please. Thank you. Please, sir. Can I have some more? Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. It's I a hundred percent with you. And also as well, that moment, there's not even just like that anticipation or whatever, or that thing, but you know, that moment where you kind of like, you start off sort of kissing and then there's a moment where it just deepens. Yeah. And like, it's like the, the guard just sort of like drops and you're like, Oh no, this is, this is happening. Well, like at least, you know, sometimes you have to put the brakes on because sometimes cooler heads do prevail, but you know, there is that moment where you just like throw caution to the wind and then you're like in it. And it's like, that's like the moment where, yeah. When it, when you just, yeah, when it, it deepens, when the kiss deepens or just gets more, a little bit more frantic. Yeah, it's the moment where like, oh, somebody is about to stop kissing lips and the mouth is going to go elsewhere on the body. Oh my you God, know? yeah. <laughs> where it's like, oh, I, I like, you've just got to devour that person. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, once, 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 the, once your lips, well, yeah, once your lips pull apart, but you don't stop kissing, it's just not on each other's lips anymore. Yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. Um, like you're in real trouble that yeah that's a serious gear shift and it's it's mm -hmm. hard to call off the countdown um, yeah, it really is no cooler heads are prevailing in that moment so, but all right so after this doorway kiss that is really <laughs> yeah. sexy really sexy paulo comes back and he's like look i don't you can't tell me that there isn't something between us yeah and juna is like look, I'm going to tell you what's going on and you're not going to believe this, but here's why this is a terrible idea. And yeah. it's because I'm a vampire and I spend my entire life uh, basically hunting animals because she doesn't drink yeah. the blood of people. And, and most of the vampires in this movie are kind of, you know, somewhat civilized. They're kind of, I, call, I think, I, I think in my notes somewhere, I've got them like uh, <laughs> vegan vampires. Yeah, kind of. And we'll get to my absolute favorite scene of this movie, which is the vampire dinner party. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, Paulo is like, I don't care about any of that. I want you. You want me. I don't care about this vampire thing. And also, I'm not totally sure I believe it. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't really, does he? And, because why would you right right because it's she a, says like i have a skin condition i can't go out in the sun and stuff and like um and he's like and he's like i have to drink blood and he's and does, i think doesn't he say like what like a vampire she's like yes exactly like, yeah yes i'm a vampire and he's just like bullshit <laughs> yeah. so she says like hey i'll if we start making out like the vampire in me will come out so mm -hmm. what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain me to this bed and then we'll make out some, and then you'll see because my natural vampire self yeah. will emerge. I just don't know why, if like if that was ever an option, and it was also for his safety, why was that just not plan A? That was a win-win to me. Well, but Paulo like dances with fire here. Yeah, he does. But be, all right, <laughs> so they start making out. And sure enough, she starts writhing around, her eyes get all pale, and she gets fangs. Yeah. And in my pantheon of vampires, top ten sexy vampire. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and part of it, I think, is the fact that she's just an animal at this point. Like, she is, like, yeah, I want to... it also helps that she's in, like, her underwear, which is black lace. Does not hurt. It doesn't hurt. And she has a fantastic body mm. she Ooh. does indeed and long flowy red hair oh, yeah i'm gonna say you carry on <clears throat> yeah <Fine>. i mean <laughs> look i'm gonna light some <laughs> candles uh, <laughs> but sure enough apollo is like i am totally down for this as well he should <laughs> right oh my god yeah and so he starts unlocking her chains and she's like no 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 don't do this and he's like nope i am sure whatever goes down i i want this 
Yeah, I won it. And so they end up, uh, they end up fucking. She bites him, mm -hmm. and now he is going to be a vampire. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I've written a note that says, "Hello, that's what you call mating." Yeah. <laughs> See how it works on like two levels. I do. He's made him her mate. But they're also mating, like they're having sex. You see what I did? But I don't know if you see what I did there, but do you see what I did there? Uh, hang on. Let me write it down so I can yeah, look at yeah. it like that. Oh! Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's clever and funny. <laughs> it is clever and funny. <laughs> um, I was so proud of myself when I wrote that down. I was like, oh my God, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, the, like, like I was saying at the upfront, this whole sequence is the reason when I when I think of this movie, I think that this is one of the top tier sexy vampire movies. Oh fuck yeah, absolutely. Them getting down and her biting him, like they are both, like I said, both beautiful people, mm -hmm. and, and getting down, like real getting down, yeah, like proper. And again, don't they have? Um... Uh, they like have a like almost like a bird's eye view again of them. Oh yeah, of, like like because like she's like straddling him, but like uh like but they're like both sat down, but that position where like you kind of put your legs around each other, sort of thing almost, and mm -hmm. then but like you both sat up, and then like and then doesn't and then, that's right, and then they kind of fall back, and then she like rolls over onto him or something, and then that's when she like yeah something yeah sorry it was like four in the morning when I watched it no like, it's it is a good choreography of two people enjoying each other uh, yeah. a great and, deal. Like, the camera angles are fantastic too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also uh, one of my notes here is the post sex, uh, scene of like, okay, here's what's going to happen. Now you're going to, your senses are going to be heightened and all that stuff. The mm -hmm. music is so good. Oh, it's such a gothic score, isn't it? And yeah. like really dramatic. I fucking love the score in this film. It's yeah, it's that very like Euro horror kind of vibe to it all. Oh, 100%, and, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Um so good. So but the best possible scenario is, is what happens where Paulo now is an immortal vampire. <laughs> hooked up in the fucking dream no shit like she is with juna who is gorgeous mega rich right staying at this beautiful summer home and just hanging out being a vampire and being awesome yeah and, and then like having sex and like chasing down deer and eating it and whatnot yeah exactly yeah and it's like she <laughs> she says to him like oh um like it's i think it's the morning after whatever she's like are you scared and he's like or uh, yeah and then he goes no that's what had to happen and like yeah <laughs> like yeah <laughs> that is what had to happen there was no way that wasn't gonna happen and look at you grinning from ear to ear buddy <laughs> like i mean i don't think the guy ever really grins in this film he's very broody but like um but but yeah internally though he's jumping up and down like a five-year-old absolutely and he not only does he say like oh well that that was what had to happen but she says the same thing later when she's talking to Mimi. We'll get to her in a second. Oh my god, yeah. And you know, when Mimi, her sister, is asking her, like, why this guy? And she was like, It was always gonna happen with him. Like there was yeah. some there was some mutual attraction between the two of them that was undeniable. Both of them knew it. Yeah. And it's like fighting it. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't, probably the closest I've come to this level of just raw ass, like animal, mm -hmm. you know, attraction. Yeah. Like, yeah. There, there was, there was one woman I dated for, not for very long. Cause there were other reasons that the relationship wasn't going to work out. Yeah. But like the, the first time we ever had sex was like revelatory of mm -hmm. like, Oh, this is this chemistry is totally fine. <laughs> this yeah. works out. Um, and it was the first, all right, this is, this is getting somewhat confessional, but in the spirit okay, of the so show. I'm so glad it's not me. I'm so glad it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> For once. <laughs> so I think that, 
was it the first maybe not the first time but certainly the 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 most intense time where mm -hmm. as we were uh, in in the in medius coitus in the throes in the throes of passion mm -hmm. she, she grabbed my hand put it on her neck and was like i want you to fucking choke me and i was like Whoa, what <laughs> <laughs> all right and and i did oh my god bo it was um, dirty. That the <laughs> sex I had with her was filthy. Okay. Uh well, okay. All right. Uh <laughs> I'm wondering how like much I should reveal here. <laughs> um yeah, like so uh <clears throat> there was this like time where basically there was uh this this well, it's, it's kind of like a co-worker well, it was a co it wasn't kind of like it's a co it was a co-worker mm -hmm. um and so it's that thing of like you you know you shouldn't mm -hmm. again it's this thing of like you know you shouldn't and so like it kind of makes it even more attractive and it kind of got to the point where like we would be flirting and stuff and then we uh like went on a night out um and it was like with some work people and things and we just kind of broke away from the crowd and we we went back to his car because you know party mm -hmm. um and it was one of those things like you know before and so i was talking earlier about you know like we've had a date or whatever this wasn't a date this was literally just pure attraction and you know that bit where like you're not you haven't done anything or whatever and you haven't like necessarily expressed anything but you know that it's coming and it's that kind of moment of anticipation just before and so we were just like sat in the car like you know, like just who's going to make the first move, you know? Mm -hmm. But then once we did, it was just like, bam, like clothes off everything in the back seat. And, um, it was one of those things where I think you sort of said about it earlier where you like, um, where it just happens to be that you just have that same level of like, like you're into the same things and stuff. And like, we, you know, had like, we had never hooked up before or anything and it just so happened that like both of us <clears throat> really kind of into rough sex okay sure um so trying to try to not reveal too too much about myself but like um i'm like any kind of real level but like yeah um it was just he he did he basically he went to choke me <laughs> And then he sort of like wide eyed because it was in very much in the moment, and he was like wide eyed, like, oh shit, no, is this okay? And I was just like, harder, you know? <laughs> right, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it was just this very animalistic thing, and like that we we marked each other pretty damn good by by the end of that night. Um, and it was just this very kind of like yeah, just taps into that real like animalistic, um, no holds barred, just fucking let loose, you know, kind of kind of thing and when you have like that with some because it's very rare i think because like i think a lot of the times when you're with someone you have to kind of like maybe build up to that level sure yeah, or yeah, yeah. like you have to learn about each other a little bit and what the person likes it was just like one of those like really rare times where it's like you just knew mm -hmm. uh, really fuck i can't remember the point of what my story was i know I, I, was... that that's it i think because it was the it yes it, it was the yes, exact that was same because it, it was the thing of you just knew that i knew that was a point sorry yeah yeah i've j just like hey normally this this kind of stuff is like oh uh, like you said you know we've been together for a while we know what we like it's you know you can get a little freaky here and there and it's fine mm -hmm. but yeah this was just like from jump like yeah. th this is going to be dirty Mm -hmm. and uh and it was great it was great that was a fantastic weekend because um, <laughs> because it was it, we fucked a lot and it was great and then afterwards mm -hmm. it was like all right well there there were some other reasons this is not great uh but that part of it was exceptional um mm -hmm. but uh anyway so <laughs> vampires what happens in the film <laughs> yeah so <laughs> but but that is to be a disclaimer for this episode yeah but the, the, you know to the the theme of sexiness like there is something and it doesn't it's a chemistry you don't have with everyone or at least not everyone right away but there is something yeah. about that kind of raw animal passion that is mm -hmm. like when when you get a whiff of it oh oh that's fun um 
but yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, so Paulo and Juna have the perfect life. They are madly in love, doing all kinds of animal fucking. Yeah. And then I'm not giving a shit about anything else in the outside world. Well, because you don't have to. Like you're a vampire. You're above no, it all at this point. It's oh, hundred percent. If I was going to be any kind of like like you know fantastical creature like that, it's a hundred percent a vampire. Oh, 100% for sure, a vampire. Yeah, like, I don't understand how anything else is even considered vampire. Right, right. Even if you've got to murder your fellow man, not fellow man. You're not a man or a woman anymore. You're a you're no. a god. Yeah, and they are your prey to do your bidding. Yeah, and and that's one of the things that kind of the movie gets into. But so Mimi. Juna's sister that I, I mentioned earlier shows up <laughs> uninvited and it's just like hey very much uninvited <laughs> yeah uh just like that Alanis Morissette song <laughs> oh my god I love that song that's yeah. a sexy song that is a sexy song real sexy song isn't it? I think it's because of the strings um but the, yeah I uh I think all of it honestly yeah it, yeah, you're you're right. It's all good. Um, so, but Mimi shows up and is like, "Hey, I'm gonna crash here for a little bit," and June is like, "Oh no no no! This is a terrible terrible <laughs> idea." And <laughs> you're gonna fucking what now? <laughs> right. And w there's a flashback where you see that like Mimi has just come from eating a couple of people at some apartment somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And Paulo is like ah she doesn't seem that bad why don't you and That's your right. sister get along and <clears throat> juna refers to her as quote a disturbed creature which oh, I, yeah which i really like and and coming from her as well not that she's she's not like disturbed or anything but you know she is a vampire and so i think when you've got a vampire kind of, and, and her sister no less going no she is fucked up yeah. you know like you kind of got to take that you got you got to heed that you know yeah and yeah so mimi uh says like hey i'm only gonna stay for a week then i'm out of your hair i'm gonna you know i just want to take a breather i'm trying to get my life together you know this is take a little mimi time mm -hmm. and and not uh, look you you're d describing me like a maniac that's not who i really am um but of course she is she is an she is chaotic evil at best like <laughs> yeah there's she... there's like she just goes to bars seduces men and and murders them while fucking her yeah yeah let's not forget that yeah well it's a <laughs> sexy movie it's a sexy movie i love that scene as well where they parallel between the two kind of for lack of a better term couples because you say she's gone to a bar she's sort of seduced this guy she's lured him outside and down this alleyway and like at the same time it kind of like cuts back and forth between that what's going on there and then also between you know Gina and uh, and Paolo um and you know they've gone <clears throat> to this uh fuck where have they gone to they've gone to this real class is it like an opera is it gone to the opera or something yeah like, it, it's um yeah. no 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 it's the play that Xenia is in isn't it oh that's right yes 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 i knew it was fucking yeah yeah that's right so yeah they've gone to uh watch this this play and it's all very kind of like classy and they're in their best clothes and it's all very civilized and stuff and then she and then you've got but you, in contrast that's what i love they have so much contrast because mimi's gone to this really kind of grimy underground club and she's all in her like goth nightwear which is awesome and um and she's got really dark black hair isn't she and she's got these really big eyes and this very kind of like just this very devilish smile and um and plus you know french and her skirt is barely covering her ass and it's mm -hmm it's not anything that i'm upset about um and <laughs> it's just it's just there's such opposites because you know say you've got this classy night out and you've got this underground club you've got this long-standing well relatively long-standing loving couple and you've got a pair of strangers you've got that when they get home they just completely like pull each other's clothes off but they are at home whereas mimi's like she's outside in an alley on top of a, like one of those massive big like bins you know like what they called those like yeah, it's a dumpster is what they're called dumpster, in, the, yeah. Yeah, in, the, yeah. in the States. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Just a but filthy what, alleyway. 
it's really yeah yeah um and then ultimately i mean what for me like what that scene just sort of boils down to is just like it doesn't matter how you dress it up or, or dress it down like it it all boils down to the same thing like we are all like wanting for our desires we all do and want the same things and like you know when we're in the dark like it doesn't matter what else how you dress it it still boils down to the same thing um whether you are like someone who's like in high society or whether you know you're just on the streets like when that when that desire kicks in bam you are getting it you know mm -hmm. i really love that scene i think actually that might be my favorite scene just those two paralleling yeah yeah back and forth bit just because like i just think it was such a cool imagery it, very, yes it, it's a very good scene but all right let's get to my favorite scene okay okay okay, okay, okay. which is after this play uh every everybody goes to xenia's house who and xenia mm -hmm. is is like she's the one who owns the home that juna is staying in with paulo um yeah. she is this actress who um is very like erudite is very she's kind of this matron of the vampire community in this area and um they're having this dinner party essentially for all these vampires and everybody's just kind of chit-chatting about like well you know should we should we look at humans as equals because we're really not like we're awesome and humans kind of suck but <laughs> we don't you know like we could feed on them and xenia is is very much leading the the charge with ideas of like no 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 we need to kind of integrate so that we live alongside humans and you know that yeah. we, we we are on the verge of having our own civilization just like the humans do and that's really the big leg up that they have that we don't we're all these kind of loner marauders and they have actual yeah. civilization yeah yeah and that's the thing as well is that they have like in this party you can see that there is that civilization there that everyone's very pleasant they're very warm and welcoming to paolo who's a very new vampire you know and um it's just this like yeah just the height of, uh, of like the finer lifestyle and there's all this like glamour and, and everyone's beautiful and it's this beautiful house with these beautiful things with these beautiful people um and yeah like it's it's just very yeah as I say very civilized sort of like not really it's a very kind of again it's a very contrasting image compared to how we've seen them feed yeah and um you know and how base that they can get with you know with their instincts um one thing that they said the phrase in there that i really just loved <laughs> it just really cracked me up was politically correct plasma yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> where it's like it's artificial blood isn't it it's like well it's kind of like true blood isn't it it's like in a lot of respects, this actually did kind of remind me of True Blood, this film. Just with like the premise of trying to fit into society and like not killing humans and having this artificial blood so that they can, you know, they can have a civilization and live amongst the humans kind of thing without it being a thing. But that's also sort of, I, I think, what the scene is getting at is that there's this veneer of civilization, but underneath yeah. it all, these are just bloodthirsty monsters. Yeah, well, she really resents that phrase monster, doesn't she? She really yeah. doesn't like that word. Right, yeah, she, right, very much is, uh, takes umbrage at the idea of being called a monster. But as yeah. we will see, uh, that, all right, so, yeah, yeah, all that is happening. But let's, let's get to the good stuff where <laughs> um, Mimi, after one of the performances, meets this young girl named Annie, played by Riley Keogh, as a matter of fact. Oh my god, was that Riley Keogh? <gasps> yeah. Oh my god, I've never recognized her in a million years. And, yeah, she's... Sorry, my mind's a, just blown a little bit right now. <laughs> yeah, it's super early role for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a big fan of Xenia's, and Mimi sees her and kind of fawning over Xenia, and Mimi again, an el just a, 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 like the Tasmanian devil of this movie, of just like you know it's what carnage. Yeah, it's just Xenia has been a little high and mighty, and I think I know how to uh, bring her down a peg. Do you know who she reminds me of? Actually, you know if if Audrey Horn was going to be a vampire. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It would be Mimi. It would be Mimi. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, there's another. Sherilyn Finn and Twin Peaks. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Hot down. Yeah. Anyway, so Mimi. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So Mimi uh, takes this girl Anne to Xenia's place. And, yeah. And she's only 17. Right. And a virgin. Yeah. Which they can which is, smell. Oh, yeah. Which is just all kinds of weird and gross, but also makes sense. Right. So. In a way, I really wish it didn't. You know, like. Well, and, and so Mimi is like, oh, no, this is a big fan of yours. And I told her that you could meet her. And Xenia is like, the fuck are you doing bringing her here? <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I I haven't had human blood in like five years or whatever she says. Yeah, yeah, a while. And also the fact that she's a virgin, you know that that makes her especially tempting. Yeah. And so, and she's just so fucking eager as well. This girl, she's just like she's she's just she's walking prey. Like she's just a billboard for just come bite me. Oh yeah, she's like, oh, I love you so much. And and when Mimi told me that we could be introduced, I was so excited. And Zena's like, oh, so Mimi, you just picked you out of the crowd to bring you here. Okay, <laughs> I see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, and Mimi's like, well, you two talk. I'm just gonna go get a drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just yeah. And then she and she she kind of just waits outside and just basically just. It's almost like a countdown for her, like, evil plan coming to fruition. It's just like, and five, four, three, two, one. You know, and, like, she knows exactly what she's done and exactly how it's going to play out. Yeah, and so she brings Anne uh, a, a drink, but has, I, it, it, the implication is that she intentionally chipped this glass. Yeah. So that when, the, when Anne takes a drink, it cuts her lip. Mm-hmm. And, and so, then, yeah, yes, she's now bleeding. Right. So this virgin <laughs> blood is now filling that that the aroma of that is now f- filling Xenia's apartment. Which, by yeah. the way, the only people in this apartment at this point are Mimi, the virgin, <laughs> and Xenia. Yeah, who hasn't had human blood in like probably a decade or you know five years or something. Right. It's like it's like it's like if you know if, if someone's going to force you to be vegetarian or you forcing yourself to be vegetarian and then someone says, "Hey, come and smell this steak." Right. <laughs> oh god damn. <laughs> yeah. And like, "Hey, I just cooked this medium rare delicious steak." Mhm. It's and, like sirloin or something. Right. And then Mimi's like, "Oh, you know what? You're right. Uh I shouldn't I shouldn't have uh brought her. I'll take her away now." And Xenia's like, whoa, 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 whoa. let's not be crazy. Yeah, let's not do anything rash here. <laughs> right. I mean, she's come all this way. I mean, the least thing, you know, she's such a fan. The least I can do is to have a talk with the girl. <laughs> right. And Mimi's like, well, I'm going to leave. You, are you sure you're going to be okay with her alone? And she's like, yeah, 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 I'll be fine. It's all cool. It's totally cool. As it's beads of sweat, <laughs> like, drip down her forehead. I'm fine. <laughs> Right, and her eyes are all vampired out. It's like, oh, this is done. She is, yeah. And and Mimi, um, it you know basically has just set all of this up. Yeah, so, she's lit the fire and she's walking away, and she. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just you know pulling the pin on the grenade and throwing it over your shoulder before you walk out yeah. of the building. Smirking. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and. So she ends up, uh, Xenia, you know, of course, ends up feeding on Han. And, Obviously, of course she does. But it's, oh, it's such a good scene. It's so much yeah. fun. She just completely comes undone. Like, because, yeah, you're right. Because after, like, she's had, we've had this scene where she's very much, and she argues down with this guy as well, doesn't she? Who's like, you know, it, it, there's this guy who's sort of like he's like look i see what you're saying but really we have to kind of like understand our baser instincts and she's all like no like we can do it like it's you know we've got this alternative and it's fine and this 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 and this and she's really like yeah as you say she's kind of on her high horse about it and um you know and and then literally in what three minutes all of that comes away and she is completely undone yeah yeah, well, yeah. And, and the other part of that, the, like the political part of this, is that Juna has been complaining to Xenia about Mimi feeding on humans, and that's a real no-no. Right. 
Yeah. And so now Mimi is just like, well, you know, maybe you overlook all the crazy shit that June has been telling you because, you know, between us, eh, maybe a human ain't so bad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And oh, she's Mimi is such a fun so, character. She's awesome. She's and the the actress who plays her is just does such a fantastic job. And it's just it's such a a hideously gleeful watch. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, yeah. There's, like you can't look away. It's a fucking car crash, but you can't look away, and part of you likes it. There's also that great moment, uh, and I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but there's the moment where. Um, Paulo and and Juna are coming home and they find Mimi in the living room with this threesome. Yeah, having a threesome with these two humans. Yeah. And who are also very attractive. Like I swear to god that we're in Connecticut everyone's amazingly attractive. Yeah. I don't know if that's true to life, but it, apparently it is in this film. <laughs> I I can guarantee you it is not true. Um <laughs> but yeah, they're <laughs> They're uh, all about to get down, and Juna walks in and is like, what is going on here? <laughs> get the fuck out of my house, kind of thing. Yeah, well... And she plays up, but she's, she's doing it to save them, and she's just like, you need to leave, like, right now. You need to get dressed and get out, kind of thing. Like, you don't understand. Like, you need to go. Like, she's not doing it in a mad... Well, she's not obviously mad at Mimi, but she's, like, very much trying to save their lives. Right, well, and also say, like, Mimi has a disease. Like, there, she, she, there, yeah. there is something wrong with her. You need to get out. And mm -hmm. so this couple, like, calls a cab and goes to uh, uh, wait for the cab. And they end up just kind of walking by themselves down this road. Worrying about what sort of ST, STIs they potentially have. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> unfortunately mimi is now on the hunt and murders both of them yeah can we just like oh god when when uh i love how the girl as well the, the guy gets attacked and she's like i'm out <laughs> like yeah. i'm not even gonna try and stick around or save him i am out of here and like you know fair play because that is the smart thing to do um but the fucking image of mimi in the background just speeding after her this like flurry of like of just a hunt it is oh, it fucking terrified me like it yeah. really just it's like it's like you know that that primal fear like when you think someone's chasing you up the stairs and you just bolt mm -hmm. it, it reminded me of that i was just like that i no, i can't i like that re like this film didn't this film isn't as i wouldn't say this film is a scary film um like it doesn't have like jump scares it doesn't have you know but that moment terrified me yeah just the way that she speeds up and gains on her like without even like you blink and bam she's behind you just and but something about her movement as well i can't remember exactly what it is but it's like it's almost like a sped up scurry which is just so fucking unsettling like it just yeah it fucking scared the shit out of me that bit yeah it, it's Ugh. it's a great image of mimi just slowly getting closer and just hauling ass behind her yeah it's really good yeah exactly yeah that's it. it starts off slow and then it speeds up oh no i can't even it really freaks me out <laughs> it really freaked me out like it really killed any kind of buzz that i had i mean until you know about five minutes later when probably shit kicks off again like i just but in that moment i was like uh, nope <laughs> yeah so and things just start falling apart from here like uh the ben yeah with michael rapaport michael rapaport a coked up michael rapaport always a good time in a movie <laughs> yeah it really is if you want to make your movie a slight bit better have michael rapaport show up as a, a coked out movie producer yeah exactly he's just he's michael rapaport playing michael rapaport in the movie. <laughs> yeah and <laughs> so he shows up to check on paulo and like hey yeah. we paid you to rewrite uh, the script and I haven't heard from you and Paul was like oh I've got some pages and he's like oh this is fucking great <laughs> um, and he's like hey how about I stay for dinner and June is like uh, I mean we've got a wild Mimi on the loose yeah and we need to be aware that we need to get this dude in and out of here as quickly as possible yeah but without like raising any kind of suspicion right and like bless Ben uh, this Michael Rappaport's character for anyone who hasn't seen this film like ben he's like i really even 
even though he's like this coked out agent like he has this real enthusiasm and like I feel like he genuinely does want to support Paolo and like I, I, I do get this sort of impression that they are that there is this business relationship sure but I do get this impression that they are kind of friends as well and um and as soon as I started to like him I was like oh no he's gonna die oh yeah well at dinner he's like you Paulo you look happy I it's been so long since I've seen you smile yeah and Just... he says he's like you used to be so arty with like you know like your shitty arty car and stuff and sort of ripping him a little bit yeah but anyway but it ultimately says like hey i've had too much to drink tonight i need to stay here mm -hmm. and yeah. june is like oh i this is a really bad idea mm. but also i understand you can't drive yeah all right yeah yeah we've we've got a room you can stay in upstairs yeah and oh okay yeah and and naturally Mimi sniffs this out yeah obviously and and then murders him just straight up murders yeah. poor ben it's a really great scene as well because there's this like all this arterial spray that kind of like flies across the wall it's like something out of dexter you know it's just like there's this spray of blood and you just see it like really thick and it just like drips down the wall and things and um and you have this like throat being slashed out and stuff it's just it's really brutal actually that bit yeah it's probably one of the most like because none of all the kills are pretty brutal like because we see like full-on like tendons and muscle from the neck being ripped out and chewed on and stuff it's not like two dainty little holes or anything it's a proper tear your fucking neck out um and you will die of like blood loss as opposed to necessarily anything to do with the like a, a vampire bite like it's just the fact that you've got no neck anymore you know but this one was just i don't know whether it's just because i really quite like ben or what but like i just felt like this one was just like that was a that was a, a like an it was like elevated brutality yeah yeah and it, and it's again that contrast of the you know very you know elegant kind of settings and mm. this this sort of passionate love story and then, yeah. and then periodically you see like, oh, no, no, these are just bloodthirsty creatures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no really getting around that. Like, you can dress them up as every, however you want, but it's like, yeah, it's like I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter, you know, where you live or what you've got going on. Like, you are what you are. You like what you like and you do what you do. Yeah, and uh, the implication, I think, is just, you know, that this is... <sighs> it's sort of a mask of of civilization but not just for the vampires i mean obviously the movie is kind of talking about just that part of all of us yeah um but yeah i mean also shout out to irene the the maid, oh my god love irene who is um safe amongst all these vampires because she has this rare blood disease yeah that makes her blood kind of poison to vampires so she is you know the way they put it is like oh she's really valuable because yeah. she handles our business she she keeps everything private and also she's no temptation yeah and she can go out in the world and do things during the day that they can't do because they can't go out during the day yeah yeah and so but irene is the one having to clean up all this mimi shit uh <laughs> And she's such an unsung hero she she is we'll get to her moment uh her shiny moment in a, in a moment oh my but, god it's just oh my god it's just so fucking good but but to get back to that kind of like you know they're these people are just this collection of like irrepressible desires mm -hmm. there's a moment because mimi is kind of giving juna some shit all through the movie about paulo be like what makes him so special like he's not he is not some you know shiny knight that is no. you know going to be eternally faithful and your your companion for eternity and that kind of thing and yeah. uh to prove her point because again mimi is a force of chaos <laughs> she yeah. she finds paulo taking a steam and you know has a seat uh, beside him and starts putting the moves on him pretty fierce and mm -hmm. in typical you know animal fashion Paulo cannot 
stop himself. Resist. Yeah. No. And so I was so mad at him. Yeah. I was like, I've even got, I've even got a note going, Paolo, Paolo, what are you doing, you absolute prick? <laughs> but the shower sex scene though is pretty banging. You're right. Like you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, although I have found in my uh, my life, um, sex in the water, not necessarily a steam room, but just underwater sex, kind of difficult. Yeah, it really depends on the setup. So, like, if you're like in, apparently, if you're in a, <clears throat> if you apparently, if you're in a pool uh-huh. and stuff, then that's great because you're both buoyant. Right. And you can like hold on to the side and, you know, you might have a step or two, like, cause you can get a step or whatever to like sit on or like a ledge and, you know, do that. Um, and then, but it's like when you have like a shower and it's kind of like, and if you're not at the right height yeah, and everything's a little bit slippery yeah. and there's like hard surfaces everywhere, like the, the theory of shower sex, I think, is a lot hotter than the actual practicality of it for the most part. Unless, again, unless you have one of those like shower seats, <laughs> but I don't know, unless you're like old, I don't know why you would. Um, but That's why um, geriatric sex is the best. The shower seats right there. <laughs> oh, God. No, don't, because I just watched X. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Uh, oh. Yeah, you'll know why that that bothered what you just said bothered me. Okay, all right, all right. But go watch it though; it's great. Um, anyway, can I make out my mind? Um, so, yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's 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 awkward. It is a bit awkward. Like, I think what's great is if you have, uh, like, first of all, if you can, get, well, they kind of go on the floor, which I think is going to be is like your best case scenario. If you kind of can go on the floor with the water, just kind of going on you but not like necessarily directly over your head because that's off-putting um or if you just have like a nice make-out scene in the shower before mm-hmm. like you know ambling over to drier safer less awkward terrain the the uh american werewolf in london kind of move yes that yes that exactly yeah going like making out in the shower and then taking that to the bedroom yeah exactly yeah and you're both nice and clean yeah I mean, for a while until you I get mean, all sweaty bit, yeah. and stinky. And then you have to shower her again. But yeah, it's just a continual cycle. Then. <laughs> right. It's a real vicious circle. <laughs> oh, no. I'm really dirty all over. Oh, look. Oh, my God. So are you... well, I guess we're just going to have to shower again. Oh, no. Yeah. Van Morrison <laughs> starts playing. <laughs> One thing leads yeah. to another. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah. So they get down and immediately Paulo does not feel great about this no he does not and he's just like you know juna i uh, how about we just get out of here uh, how about we leave uh Zena's house we'll go to italy or something mm-hmm. and uh you know uh, just put all this crazy mimi stuff behind us uh and i don't have to think about having sex with her anymore and juna's like what and he's like nothing <laughs> yeah but yeah, basically but i like she knows what what has gone down but mm-hmm. i think she doesn't really blame him as much as she blames mimi for this well no because mimi is well i mean yeah she's a chaotic force for evil so you know i mean jesus she's like just she's the structo girl so you know she and she's extremely beautiful and she's extremely manipulative and you know they they're sisters so she's gonna know exactly what she's like and she will have an understanding of like if mimi wants mimi will get you know yeah. like it, it the <laughs> i mean he had a choice but like it's it in that moment i imagine it would have been extremely difficult to resist that yeah and i think there's kind of an idea when you're, when you're a vampire as well like and it's right. very instinctual right that yeah that yeah that's exactly what i was thinking is that i think juna kind of understands like oh the, you know these passions were coursing through him and mimi was very deliberately trying to make this happen like yeah, paula she was wasn't chasing him. no mimi. no no and so <laughs> so she's like yeah yeah well let, let's get out of here but unbeknownst to them 
Mimi, who has, uh, you know, again, just been on a, a tear of, you know, causing Xenia problems and mm-hmm. murdering other people and that kind of thing, is yeah. driving back home. Yeah, because the sun's coming up. In the, oh, no, it's not yet. No, it's, but she, she needs to get back home, though, I imagine, because the sun in a few hours will come up. Right. And she yeah. sees the deer that we've seen a couple of times in the movie. Just, you know, it's like the 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 prey animal, right? Uh, yeah. And she swerves the car to mm-hmm. avoid hitting this deer. but Probably more for the car's sake than the deer's sake, though, I would say. A- yes, absolutely. Um, but she loses control of the car. It, you know, flips over, it crashes. Mm-hmm. And when she comes to the sun is coming up yeah and also her uh ankle is broken oh my god this this is another bit as well like because she she gets herself out of the car and she's trying desperately to get to the house before the sun fully rises and you know she burns to a crisp and she like she's but yeah you say she's fucked off her leg and her ankle or something and she's dragging her foot and like dragging her leg along and she has this real kind of lurching movement and this along with this very kind of animalistic desperation on her expression just this like real sheer determination to survive like the whole thing I mean she looks like a monster and like it's just it's so unsettling like the two moments which give me proper like shudders are both meany yeah you know and it's just and for someone who is so sexy and so beautiful and so decadent to go from one minute of like you know getting me excited shall we say Mm -hmm. to like the next minute getting me downright terrified like that is a real like i don't know like the writing the acting all of it you know it's just like it's it's really effective and it's it's so jarring as an audience member to watch because you're kind of feeling one way and then all of a sudden like you get the rug cut under you uh, so uh, rug sort of pulled up from under you with a moment like this where it's just pure like no thanks yeah i mean because not only is she completely messed up from the car accident itself but because the Mm -hmm. sun is coming up yeah. she's like lesions all over her face and arms and she's just like crawling clawing the earth to yeah. try to get to safety yeah it's pure survival and there's this bit there's this the effects of like her skin bubbling we can see her skin start to bubble in the sun and it's just like it's such a cool effect it's just yeah it's really gross but really cool and she's right outside the house yeah oh my god and then the secret <laughs> hero of the movie, Irene, shows up. Yeah. And Mimi is like, you've got to help me. Get me inside. Mm-hmm. And Irene instead just pulls out a smoke. Oh, that's so good. Lights it up and watches oh. Mimi burn. Oh, I know. And it's like, as well, like, her expression is just stone cold it's like there isn't a single ounce of remorse or sympathy or anything i got like so i got this note that says oh irene is gonna fuck you up kind of thing because you you know you can tell she's not there to help because irene has a loyalty to this family and she sees you know like you know the help see everything kind of mm-hmm. idea like she sees every she sees the absolute chaos that irene has brought into this into this home um and you know the the family that has looked after irene kind of thing um and then i've written like so yeah she isn't gonna help her and she's like and i've written in all block capitals omg the savagery of irene ha! Yeah, she is stone cold she just watches <laughs> mimi die at her feet the cigar kind of thing like is it a cigar it's like oh it's one of those like french cigarette cigar things isn't it? it's like yeah. the narrow like the small ones i can't remember what they're called cigarettos it's, yeah it's so fucking baller yeah like she's just such a bad ass in that moment oh and we're not even done yet oh my god both carry on carry on and so so the the end of the movie is juna and and paulo with their bags getting ready Mm -hmm. to leave for italy Mm -hmm. and 
<laughs> as they're going through like the entrance way of this house on their way to you know throw the baggage in the car and and hit the plane they're like hey what is that trash bag over there by the stairs <laughs> and Irene's like nah don't worry about it it's nothing and it the implication very clearly is this is Mimi scooped up off the driveway and thrown into a couple of garbage bags well it's just it's like what I've got I've written um oh the audition moment with the bag yeah <laughs> It's just this jerk, a single jerk movement. You're like, oh shit, there's something alive in that. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking gnarly, but it's so good. It's so good, and I just wasn't expecting it. I thought, like, you know, she's just there. She's burnt to a crisp. Boom, boom, boom. Like, not standard vampire stuff, but you know what we we know about vampires, and like, yeah, that, you know, she'll be done. Um, so, so for there to be that extra cherry on the cake, I just. Oh my! It made me so fucking happy. Yeah, it was so good. And then they like so Paulo and Juna take off and go to live their you know more civilized life together with Mimi. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, assumedly just totally destroyed by Irene and the thrown in the dump. Yeah, never to bother anyone again. Yeah, um, and that's uh, you know again I I'm kind of jealous of the fact that you've never seen this before. Because yeah. the moment where Mimi gets it, you're like, oh my goodness, this it's... is more satisfied than I thought it was going to be. Yes, that's exactly it. Like, this is a great movie. This is hot. It's kind of fun. There's like, there's lots of cool gothic stuff going on. There's amazing scores, beautiful people. They've got some really cool kind of like themes and like discussion points. This is, oh shit. <laughs> right. You know, like, oh fuck yes <laughs> you know like it's give it give it all of the applause <laughs> yeah like they lull you into thinking you think you know you don't know <laughs> and it's just such a simple but perfect moment and from the most unlikely person of irene who is just in the background just minds her own business she's just like the help or whatever and she's you know she's got a little explanation as to why she's there and how come she's immune and whatever and that's all fine and you kind of forget about her and then all of a sudden she just comes in like a fucking ace up the sleeve and it's like oh chef's kiss perfection it's really good i like this movie a lot I do too. I'm going to go out and buy it. Um, all right. Well, folks, I feel like we have done a pretty balanced job of talking about this movie and also confessing <laughs> way too sexy much about stories. Ourselves. <laughs> yeah, but, way too much. But if listeners, if you have a sexy story that you would like to send our way uh for me on on twitter you can send that to uh at dark parade pod um you can also find me on facebook in the dark parade uh facebook group um and and obviously thanks for listening to the dark parade but i'll shut up because more importantly you want to hear from Kay pollock and where you <laughs> can tell her your shameful stories yes and and yes. also uh to promote your stuff yeah, so if you have any uh, stories or confessions or questions or anything that Bo just said, you feel free to uh, like DM me um, on uh, Facebook. It's probably the best place. Um, and it's just, it's Kate Pollock and you'll find me at the, the Dark Parade uh, Facebook page. I'm on there. So just search for the members, find me, DM me, jobs are good. Um, but I have a, another show called Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds. Um, that is, we just celebrated our one year anniversary. Uh, so happy one year old us happy birthday um and that uh that episode dropped this week but you know i say we've been around for about a year now so there's a whole load of episodes you can go check out and uh it's just like a a dark movie under that kind of genre umbrella uh podcast but it's mainly just two mates taking the piss out of each other and and chatting a load of movies and having fun with it so uh if, if that sounds like your kind of thing you can check that out on all your usual places it's on anchor it's on spotify apple google stitcher um and uh you can check out the facebook page as well if you just put in eternal darkness of not so spotless minds it will come up on facebook and also on instagram yeah. not on twitter though don't like twitter sorry happy anniversary also the oh, it's such a, a sexy show that <laughs> even though it's only one year old it gets into all the clubs it, 
<laughs> yes, it does. Uh, yeah. And uh, she's pretty fucking brazen with it as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, all, the <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> probably best we don't explore that any further. Um, it's like dog. It's like dog years, though. It's totally fine. Like one year in in podcast though is like you know eighteen and others. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all above board. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's like yeah. Like you said, it's dog years. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we'll be back. Uh, this will be dropping on on April first. But Ooh. we'll we'll do another episode in April, more towards the yeah. end of the month, uh, to kind of catch us back up uh, after my shipborne journey, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and thanks as always for for listening to this, and uh, until next time, you know, keep it keep it sexy, keep it damn sexy, harder, filthy, <laughs> filthy sexy. <laughs> Good. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>